Hi everyone, my name is John. I'm a developer advocate here working on Phoenix and I'm going to walk you through our new guardrails integration. So for anyone who doesn't know, guardrails is a great tool. I think everyone should be using it. Uh, basically the way that it works is it can check either user inputs or it can check model outputs and it will check those, those inputs or outputs against a series of detectors that they offer within the platform. So things that detect PII, uh, guards against jailbreak attempts, guards against brain risks or hallucinations or a whole bunch of other kind of attack vectors. And if one of those guards catches an instance of this, you can have it respond with a few different things. It could use a default response, like the one you see here on the right. Uh, it could ask the LM to provide a new response, or it could actually just throw an exception, depending on how you want to handle the case. Uh, so Guardrails is awesome. We have built a new integration with them where we can capture traces on this whole flow that you see here. And then we'll also be able to export any cases where um, a guard caught something and then use that to home in on different attack vectors. And then we've also actually built our own guard that could be used in this kind of middle step here, where we will take a bunch of different examples from your own data set and use them for few shot examples to enhance the performance of that guard over time. So I'll show you each of those. Let's jump into the code. Um, so in this example, we have a rag chatbot we built with Llama Index. We'll use as a baseline here, and we'll kind of just walk you through um, what we set up. Again, this is going to be available um, in the description below. Um, so you can check out the full notebook here. One other thing that I'll call out is that uh, in this example, we're actually using hosted Phoenix. So this is a new deployment op op option that we rolled out here where uh, we have an online persistent instance of Phoenix. I've just signed up through the website to set this up and then pointed it to it with API keys. So this is not something I'm running locally. This is not something I'm running in the notebook. This is actually a persistent instance online, which is pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, back to the guardrail side of things. Uh, so we're adding in a new, um, package here for, that we have within the open inference repo uh, to instrument guardrails and then using that check down here. This will automatically capture different uh, traces on the guards as they're used. And then that alone would actually capture the traces. We wouldn't need to go necessarily further than that, um, but we can in this case because we're going to use our new uh, guard that we have defined within guardrails. Um, and so this Arise dataset embeddings guard uh, is pretty cool. So what it will do is uh, if you provide no other information to it, it's going to pull in this uh, sort of 10 few shot example jailbreak prompt we have as a default value. But you could also provide sources as an extra argument here and then pipe and connect this to existing sources that you might have of either attack vectors that have already been uh, you've already seen and been used against your program or your own just kind of set of examples of jailbreak prompts uh, that people are passing into your system. So in this case, we'll pass that in as a new guard. Um, we do some basic kind of things to set up the RAG application. Again, you guys can check this all out. This is just like a Llama Index um, RAG application using the ever-present hologram essays. Uh, and in this case, once we've got that set up, now we can run prompts against our query engine here with that guard attached. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to use the SU jailbreak prompt here. It's a popular uh, technique for jailbreaking LMs. And because we went for an exception response here, which I'll show you in a sec, uh, we're going to put this one try catch. So if I run that now, you'll see that it'll go through our system uh, and it will run our, our bot. And you can see validation failed for field errors triggered the guard that we have here. Um, and so you can see this. And so now if I flip over to Phoenix, you'll see that this is then collected up in here. So you can see on our top approach here, if I click into this, you see trace status error. We've caught an error here. Again, that same validation um, that is triggering the data set. Uh, embeddings guard that we have here. So you can see this populating within Phoenix. And just to show you as well, if I go back and I do um, a regular prompt that looks a little bit sketchy, like this is actually one that is um, can resemble a jailbreak prompt, but in this case uh, is actually okay. We're gonna have that go through our same engine and you'll see that in this case, it should make it through without actually the guard tripping it up um, and shows how the guard can be kind of discriminative against even things that look like they're a little bit more uh, scary, even though they're not. So if I jump back into Phoenix, you'll see that new case here. That made it through our whole system correctly. You can see the whole RAG pipeline that we have here, but even just the output that's coming back from this. So our guard catching the right one, letting the, uh, letting the uh, correct one through and catching the right one as well. So once we have this too, what are we gonna use this for? You could just say, okay, it's great to actually see that we've, we've blocked these. But where this gets more useful is I can actually go into here and I can add uh, an error code and I can filter for status code error in this case. And you'll see, again, this is my persistent instance. You can see some examples of this from earlier on, but you can see this is highlighting all of the cases where that guard was actually tripped. Um, 
And so I could go take these and I could add these to a data set and we'll say, let's do a new data set of jailbreak attempts. Uh, I'll do a new one here and show what that looks like. Create that data set and then we'll be able to use uh, that new one we've created. And you can see we now have our data set of a bunch of examples that we've pulled together over time uh, with all the different spans that kind of tripped up here. So hopefully this shows you how you could easily use guardrails in combination with Phoenix to really easily capture cases where someone might be trying to jailbreak your app, take up all those cases and go use them for uh, kind of beefing up the security around your app or just using guardrails to actually prevent those attack vectors from getting in. Um, awesome. Thank you guys. Have a great day and happy hacking.